uh, my other friends, I'm uh, here at the historic Cambridge University in Cambridge, um, in the beautiful country of England, in the United Kingdom. I was at Oxford University a couple of days ago and today I had the privilege of visiting Cambridge University. While uh, visiting both of um, these institutions, one thing that remained common was um, the heritage. The origins of both these universities speak about on how deeply they were rooted into the scripture and the Holy Bible. How they had valued the commandments of God. How they were deeply passionate in serving the world, in helping people find enlightenment through education. And both the places, uh, Oxford, uh, which was started in the 11th century, and then uh, Cambridge, which uh, began in the 13th century, it was 1209. Both these uh, institutions continued that Christian heritage lately, especially the last uh, two centuries, though it has shifted greatly, but still they continue with that Christian heritage. And as I stand here, it is important for us to realize and recognize some of the greatest men these institutions have produced. One of those is Sir Isaac Newton. He is well known for uh, the gravitational theories that he has introduced to the world. Now, Sir Isaac Newton was a man who was deeply rooted into faith. And in fact, he believed that, you know, his work would actually help people find belief in God. You know, after Reformation, there were many global revolutions. And these revolutions have drifted people away from faith. And when we had scientific revolution or science revolution, a lot of people, they swayed away from faith. And often there were a lot of people who would question, why do we need God when we have science? And this evening, as I stand here, I want to talk to you on how faith and science can actually go hand in hand on how science can help you find God and on how God has been generous in gifting science unto us. Bible very clearly tells us that wisdom is a gift from God. Bible tells us that all wisdom is actually found in God. And that God who is a generous God who made man his in very own image was willing to give his wisdom. As we look into the scripture, some of the prime characters of uh, uh, scripture, beginning with Joseph to Moses, Solomon, Daniel and Jesus, all of them had this wisdom, God-given wisdom. And if you have to think about on how Joseph used this wisdom, he used it. He had insights to manage a famine. Moses used it for uh, engaging people in leadership and leading people out of darkness, bondages, the land of Egypt. And he used it to give the law. And Solomon used it for governance. Daniel used it to serve in foreign lands. And Jesus, who is actually the source of truth, have given us the truth himself through the gospel. Now, this wisdom that God had, which was gifted unto man today, we receive this wisdom. We receive knowledge through this wisdom, again, through institutions as such. Now, as we know that God is the author of wisdom and that God is willing to give that wisdom. And as we have received signs through that wisdom, a lot of people may say that, well, we do not need God. There was a great man who lived in this country. His name is John Henry Newman. One of his most beautiful pieces of work is the idea of a university. In that beautiful piece of work, he contends on how theology needs to be incorporated as a discipline along with all the other disciplines. You know, science can speak about what is existing out there. And it could actually quantitatively give us the results about what is existing out there. But the one who can speak about why something has come into existence, why you and I have come into existence, why we live here, the reason we live here, and the destiny to which we were destined to, you got to understand it from the lens of God. You need to understand it 
through the scriptures without the scripture without the study of God knowing the mind and heart of God it is impossible for us to know what is existing out there so John Henry Newman was right when he said you know theology needs to be integrated with all the fields as much as we knew a lot scientifically remember scripture helps us to understand everything holistically spiritually morally so science and faith they cannot be on two pages rather they need to go hand in hand and this reason for this reason the church was committed in helping people learn know more about God know more about who you are what's in you you know when uh, I have to think about colleges like Cambridge and Oxford great men great thinkers like C.S. Lewis went to Oxford Robert Boyle went to Oxford and you come to this place sir Isaac Newton went to this place and they all had strong faith in the Lord and actually that faith helped them know more about God so we cannot see signs and faith on separate pages but rather those need to be seen on same page you know in the 20th century about 86 percent of the noble laureates all had faith all had faith in God and often if someone have to tell you that science moves you away from God think about these um, scientists who profess their faith just like Sir Isaac Newton wanted people to come to God have belief in God exploring his work so this evening I wanted to encourage you as science speak a lot think about what God does he speaks even more he even gives you the reason why science have come into existence so I encourage you to work hand in hand and learn more about life experience more of life. God bless you, Maranatha.